Okay, a little overview of this laser. This is a Laguna EX 150 watt model. 150 watts is quite a bit of power for a laser. It's also pretty cool because even though it's so powerful, it still plugs into a 110 outlet. Here are some of the details that you might need to know getting into this business if you're gonna start making products, engraving, and whatnot. One, you gotta have the space for something like this. Two, you need to make sure that it's vented outside because it does create some fumes. And there's quite a few things that go along with it. You need air coming into this nozzle to kind of brush away all the soot that is created by the laser. And also, you also need a professional water chiller or a standard industrial water chiller to cool the tube, keep it at a constant temperature while it's making, well, the infrared plasma laser. So that is, well, that was kind of a, a, a brief overview of what this thing does and what you need for it. And it's been a little daunting learning it. And I'm going to tell you some of my experiences and why I chose to go with this company because I originally had a 100 watt laser. Now I got a 150. And there's a pretty interesting story behind it. So let's dive right into that too. Okay, a brief overview of what you might need to start is a water chiller and a source of air to get through to the nozzle to eliminate some of the soot that gets created by the laser. I'm going to explain exactly what exactly this contraption is and, and why I've done it this way. Okay, so the idea here, this is basically an aquarium aeration pump. When you turn it on, it's really not that loud. And the reason I have it suspended here um, is because if it's resting on a surface, it's really hard to, to articulate this on a, on a camera. But if it's resting on a surface, similar to when your cell phone vibrates on a table versus if you're holding it and it vibrates, how loud that is, that's the difference. So by suspending this in the air and putting a piece of foam on the back, that way it just barely rests up against the wall there. I mean, I could protrude this out and actually just have it hanging and it would probably be extremely quiet, but really it's great. So that's a tip if you do go with the system. Now, I do have a much larger air compressor if I need it when I'm cutting through something like 3 8 inch or half inch material then this gives me a little more PSI I recommend about 25 to 30 if you're going to cut thicker material but for that thin stuff it's all you need yeah one more thing you also got to find a way to put the fumes and get those out of your shop you can also get like a fume diffuser but they're like seven grand at least the decent ones are and it's much cheaper just to vented outside. Let me show you that situation out there. So you can see I haven't necessarily done much with the spray foam here, but this is kind of like a, a louver you might put on the top of your house for a bathroom vent or a, you know, an exhaust fan. And it works well, at least in this application. Uh, everything's facing downwards, so no rain can get in and it works pretty good. I like it. Okay, my story about the 100 watt laser. All right, you ready? This is basically a template of the Starbond mount that I make. Uh, here's the picture of it now in its finished capacity. You can see that there. And this, I was running 10 millimeters a second at almost 80% power and two passes. Uh, this was just not working. The 100 watt laser was doing this. Now, we thought it could have been alignment issues, meaning is the laser not in a line with all the mirrors involved? Well, I got on the phone with them and the reason I went with Laguna is because of the truly exemplary customer service. They are US based and I had people FaceTiming me, sending me tutorial videos, being on the phone with me while we're watching them do this, do that. Unbelievable help. And we got this thing dialed in and I had so many resources to really help myself learn this machine from them. I don't think I would have gotten any of that, well, that customer service from any other company. Um, this isn't a sponsored video at all. I'm just telling you the truth about what happened. I ended up talking to one of their sales reps and he said, you know, I talked to my, my tech guys. They really believe that you shouldn't be having these issues. And after all the trials and errors, I mean, I spent probably 60 hours working on this thing, trying to get this thing working perfect. And um, they agreed that it, there, was a, there was some type of like a lemon law with the machine that I had. And they owned it and they said, you want to upgrade to this 150 watt? I said, absolutely. Um, and they just, they, they, they hooked it up. They, I paid the shipping to get it over here. Um, I got a wonderful free upgrade uh, for my trouble and not to say that that's gonna happen to everyone, but it was, it, it was unbelievable the graciousness that they showed. And so now we have a more powerful laser. It is a $13,000 laser, it's a great upgrade. And I'm gonna share with you now some numbers on what's happened in the past five or six weeks 
in terms of my sales. So here we go. All right, so let's talk some sales about what I've made on the laser and how it's going online. Before I get into this topic though, I get, I, I, I know people are gonna say, well, you have a YouTube channel, you can leverage your audience to buy your products. And yeah, about 40% of the online sales come from social media sources that bring them to it. The other 60% are just searchable. People coming directly there from Google, from other sources. Um, who knows, there's some really strange sources why someone's coming to my website from Pinterest. I don't know, I'm not even on Pinterest, but I get those analytics. Um, so here's the deal. Within the past six weeks or so, and I have been down in this regard. I ha a lot of times I try never to be out of stock on some of my products. Um, and that's a good business tip, by the way. If you're ever gonna start a business and you're gonna start selling products online, don't run out, okay? Even if it sells like crazy. I have, I've spent plenty of nights in this shop running these machines and didn't sleep just so I could stay in business. Is that the smartest thing? Eh, not really, but any business owner will tell you in the beginning of their, their journey, they do things like that. So I was actually out of products. All of any, anything I offered on the laser was out of stock and it was killing me. It was absolutely killing me. Um, I got the upgrade in, we started cutting. Now we're back in stock. Here's the deal. Let's just ballpark this and you get the 100 watt laser and you spend nine grand on a laser. You can get whatever you want, okay? 150 watt, 100 watt, even an 80 watt could probably do some of this stuff. It would just take a little bit longer. We've sold $3,500 worth of products on the laser in the past month or so. And that is, well, I guess that's a pretty decent amount. However, it's, it's not a whole lot because again, like I said, I was out. I wasn't able to sell. I wasn't able to promote this stuff. And so eventually, all things being equal, this machine will pay for itself in this business within a few months. And that's a pretty awesome thing. Um, I did a video a while back on my second channel um, about this thing paying for itself. And essentially, and that was a sponsored video, Penguin was, was gracious enough to send me that CNC machine. Um, and at the time it was around $6,500. Um, it, it paid for itself within the first two months. Um, and honestly, people are gonna say, well, your YouTube channel is why people uh, come to your site. And yeah, let's talk about that just a little bit more. So let's talk how exactly you can find customers, where you can find a place to sell your products. Like I said before, I do this through YouTube and there are quite a few opportunities that I am missing. And I'm gonna relay those to you because you don't need a successful YouTube channel to sell your stuff. My biggest uh, thing that I haven't done yet is Google AdWords, okay? Uh, Google AdWords, I'll tell you a story about my cousin. He was here in Northeast Florida. This is in the early 2000s and he started a graphics and design like banner stands company. You know, when like a new barber shop or a new business opens up and they have all these stands outside with all these vinyl you know, flags waving in the air. That's what he did. Grand opening, come see us, we're open, that kind of stuff. He ended up getting a contract with the Jacksonville Jaguars at the time um, to do all of their banners. And how that happened is because he had a lot of success after he signed up for Google AdWords. AdWords essentially, now don't quote me here, but AdWords essentially, are basically words you can pay Google that when people search these, you become in the first top three, maybe even top five of clickable results. So his ad words were banner stands, advertising signs, heads up displays. I can't even remember. He told me there's a bunch. And he said, let me show you. Type this in, boom. There's company was at the very beginning, at the very top of Google. And he said, don't click it <laughs> because I pay per click to get to my site. Here's some numbers about that. When he first started the business, he was only making around $65,000 a year and he was just working for himself and he knew that he could do this better. He was a pretty talented graphic designer, but he knew there was a better way. So he looked into AdWords. Fast forward a couple years from that and he was then paying Google Ready for this? He was paying Google over $200,000 a year to generate over $2 million in sales. Why haven't I listened to this? Partially is because, well, I don't know. I got no excuse. Maybe I should look into it. But you can sell your products through Google. It's a big one, okay? As someone in my family uh, has done so over the years and had a lot of success with it. Now, here's another one. Facebook Marketplace. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you I have not done this. I have not put my products on Facebook Marketplace and I totally should have. And that's another thing I just never did. And another thing you can do is also on Pinterest. 
Pinterest is huge, but I don't use it. And there are so many different applications. I'm not a Pinterest expert. I actually was just part of a conference here in Jacksonville where a bunch of people were very well versed in Pinterest and I just, I didn't get there in time. I didn't hear all the, the talks I needed to hear. Um, but that's another way to do it. So don't think that you only have to have a YouTube channel to do this. There are many ways, many ways. And do your own research and definitely get out there and try because it can definitely work. Oh yeah, I gotta mention Instagram, Facebook, and a big one, TikTok as well. TikTok has many creators who sell products and there's also a ton of videos out there titled, TikTok made me buy this. Have you seen those? It's because there are a lot of eye appealing advertisements that people put their products on that platform and are crushing it. I'm not, I'm not a TikToker. Maybe I should be. Although, hmm, you imagine me doing TikToks? Anyway, the, the, the style of advertising can be uniquely your own. Find what works for you, find the platform that works for you because there are a ton of them right now. Versus 10 years ago, there's no way you could do this. But now is the time, and it's really never been better to do so, to try to sell your stamp on the world. So, there you go. Now back to all these things that I've cut on this laser, and I'm telling you, if you don't have a round to it, I try to include these for free in every order. You gotta get you one. Let's do a quick little montage of how I prep this stuff and how I get it in the shed, wrap it up, and make it easily shippable. Ready? Let's go. So I typically run this laser while I'm working on other things. The shop actually has enough power to run both machines at the same time course different circuits and it works out pretty well I like to stack everything up and then bring it over and then I spend quite a bit of time doing what you're gonna see here so first order of business is to go ahead and make these to where they are individualized essentially stacking them up and then wrapping them up in some black craft paper taping them all together you can see the process goes pretty simply and it's actually fun to get this kind of thing organized and ready to go now this everyday carry tray, this thing, I love this. I have this on my nightstand. I have it in various spots in the house. It's definitely a great place to keep things organized, especially when you unload your pockets for the day. And this phone holder, I tell you what, for the next 25 orders that come in, everyone who orders anything will get a free phone holder, free of charge. I'll just include it. There you go. There's the stack ready to ship out. And of course, this is the first laser product I ever came up with. This is a CA glue holder that is featuring Starbond CA glue. All links are down below, of course. And of course, you know, I like the packaging that we've come up with here. I think it matters. If you're a customer of mine, is that unboxing experience important to you? Doesn't matter. Does it make you feel like the company you're ordering from is a bit more legitimate than, say, if they didn't care so much? I am curious to know. As you can see, the PVA glue holder gets a little bit of the same treatment. It's a little awkward, but I think that's good to go. And of course, everything is ready to go back in business, back in stock. It really feels great to finally get over the stinking virus that I posted about the last week. And it feels good to get back in business and working again. And I hope you guys really like what we're doing here. And there is the array of some of the products. And of course, we like to have fun as well. So if you're a small business owner, you know this beyond anything is that you have to absolutely scrape and grind and work and find ways to get your sales to happen, okay? There are plenty of examples of people hustling in this space, getting sales, and the one that comes to my mind, uh, which I could never do, but uh, Jenny and Davis have done a pretty exemplary job in terms of putting together a business model that people could buy cutting boards, um, a lot of times it's, it's big real estate firms to give to their customers when they close houses. They make cutting boards. They're standardized. They can custom engrave them really quick on a Glowforge, which is another option. Um, but honestly, it, they've done a pretty good job, man. If you don't know them, I'll link them down below. Uh, their, their journey has been pretty interesting. So um, it's actually been pretty inspiring, too. So go check them out. But every business owner knows that sales don't just come. I mean, this isn't Johnson & Johnson here, right? I'm not, you know... And establish, I'm not Coca-Cola. That's just not how it works. Um, but uh, you know, those companies at one point were really small as well. And you got to think that if you think that you can do this, you absolutely can. Hate to quote Henry Ford there, but you, know, you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And this, a lot of it's true. Um, but you can't give up on the fact that things are low or things are slow. How do I do this? You got to keep moving, man. You got to keep doing this kind of thing. I never thought that a bakery manager myself would be able to digitally fabricate what I've been able to do. And it's just been a matter of just, just putting your mind to it. And I hate to be preachy about this kind of thing, but I don't, I don't like it when people 
talk in the, in the regards of, well, I can never do that. Well, you're right. <laughs> you never could because you've already convinced yourself of that. You know? And it's just it's a shame. So if you're in this community and you're in this space and you want to talk about you know, upstarting something like this, I, I'm available. Like I said before, Instagram is a great place to reach out. Um, I've even had fans reach out, talk to me DM-wise. We email back and forth, and then phone, phone conversations happen, and then meetups happen, and they become great friends of mine. I mean, honestly, I'll keep those relationships private, but that, that's, that's the beauty of this community and is that people who are just from fan to friend, and now I've got friends that I talk to almost on a daily basis, at least through texting, from this community. It's been great. So these are some of the ins and outs of the, the laser experience for me thus far, and I thought you guys might enjoy it. Um, again, this is a very, very expensive machine in a lot of, in a lot of ways. I'm not going to say it's not. Um, and I, it's not like I could just go, here's a laser, see you later. Uh, there has to be some type of plan in order for it to pay for itself, and then moving forward, have it be a part of the business model. And it looks to be a huge, greatly, uh, a huge, great addition to this shop and to what we're doing here. So, hope you enjoyed this one, guys. If you have any questions, like I said, reach out. And um, again, if you're if interested in any of this stuff, it's going to be all down below. Um, and we've got all kinds of stuff down there. And uh, uh, you know, I, what can I say? Thanks for the support. It just means the world to me that you guys are helping me and my family just stay afloat, and it's awesome. So again, thanks. I'll see you later. Bye.